Meal prep is one of the best ways to save time and money and to eat a more wholesome diet. But the typical meal prep is boring. It's really hard to eat the same exact meal over and over and over, which is why I instead rely on the building blocks method. As I've shared in previous videos, the building blocks method simply means prepping a handful of different ingredients and then mixing and matching them throughout the week in various ways to create meals you're actually excited about eating. Today's meal prep is gonna take less than two hours. I've already done all my grocery shopping at Aldi. Big thank you to Aldi for sponsoring today's video. Aldi is the place to get your affordable plant-based staples, which is how I was able to spend just $22 on my meal prep groceries. That should be enough food to make 10 different meals for me throughout the week, which rounds out to just over $2 per meal. Of course, the cost of groceries might vary depending on where you live, and you might need more or less food than I do depending on your activity level and your nutritional needs. This isn't a rigid formula by any means, but when I grocery shop specifically for meal prep, I tend to break my grocery list down into six categories. First thing on the list are vegetables, and I try to get at least one cruciferous vegetable every time I go, so that's why I've got cabbage and kale, and these don't exactly have the best reputation for being tasty, but if you know how to prepare them well, they can actually be very delicious. And of course, they're so good for you. Next up, we have proteins. I like to rely on beans and lentils a lot because they are high in protein and the most affordable thing you can buy at the grocery store. So this week I got two cans of chickpeas and a block of extra firm tofu. We also need some complex carbs, so I picked up some brown basmati rice, and this is gonna be a great easy base for so many different meals, and it will help me stay energized and satiated throughout the day. A balanced meal prep also needs some healthy fats, so I picked up some raw cashews and roasted pistachios. And we're gonna use these in a couple different fun ways that'll really add some flavor to our meals. Speaking of flavor, you also wanna add some flavor boosters to your grocery list. So they don't have to be expensive artisanal fancy products. This week I'm relying on super simple budget staples. We've got an onion, garlic, lemons, and parsley. The final category in my list are what I call convenience foods. For most of us, eating the same exact foods without any variation gets old real quick. So I like to pick up a couple of convenience items that can supplement my meal prep with minimal Fuss. To be the most efficient in our meal prep, we're gonna be using different areas of the kitchen simultaneously. So for instance, while we're roasting vegetables in the oven, we might also be cooking proteins on the stove top or cooking grains in the Instant Pot or making a delicious sauce on the counter. While it seems like a lot, it's actually totally doable and it should take you just two hours. And at the end of it, you'll have options for up to 10 delicious wholesome meals that you can enjoy throughout the week. The first thing we're gonna do is roast a couple sheet pans of cabbage, garlic, and onions because this is gonna take the longest out of our meal prep. We'll slice the cabbage into steak style cuts, about six of them, each one around three quarters inch thick. With the rest of the cabbage, we'll just cut them into wedges. And cabbage is one of those underrated veggies I love. It's so inexpensive, good for you. And when it's roasted, it gets even a little bit sweet. We'll also chop up a small yellow onion, just roughly into wedges. And for the garlic, slice off the top to expose the cloves, but run your knife around the sides too to get all those hidden cloves. And rub the cloves with a little bit of olive oil and then wrap the whole thing in foil. It's gonna get really sweet sweet and jammy in the oven. Use your hands to rub some olive oil into each cabbage steak. Make sure to really get in there and then season with salt and pepper. Do the same for the wedges and the onions. All of this will go in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, about 220 degrees Celsius for 35 to 45 minutes and flip everything after about 20 minutes. And while these are roasting, we're going to multitask and take advantage of some of the other tools we have in the kitchen, starting by soaking a half cup of raw cashews in boiling water, which we'll use in one of our sauces. Now we're gonna head over to the Instant Pot where we're gonna cook our brown rice, and this is gonna be our grain for the week. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can definitely do this on the stove. I've included instructions for how to do that in the free PDF guide and the blog post, which are linked down below. The veggies and brown rice are doing their thing on their own, so we'll move on to our spiced pistachios, which we'll make on the stove top. These are a fun, crunchy flavor booster that you can add to all kinds of different meals. We'll saute the pistachios in a little bit of olive oil over medium heat for a minute. Since they're already roasted, these pistachios don't need much time and to amp up the flavor we're adding in red pepper flakes cumin paprika and a pinch of cayenne make sure to stir continuously so the pistachios get evenly coated and nothing burns just about a minute and then spread them out on a plate to cool down you might not think that pistachios would be part of a budget friendly meal prep but all of the nuts and seeds at aldi are super affordable 
After 20-ish minutes, give the veggies a toss and flip the cabbage steaks. Try to be delicate to avoid breaking them. And while those continue to roast in the oven, we'll get started on our kale. The kale I got from Aldi is pre-chopped and washed, which is a nice time saver. So all we need to do is massage it with a little bit of lemon juice and olive oil. A lot of people don't like kale because it's tough, but massaging it really softens it up, makes it a lot easier to chew. I'm just gonna store this in a reusable bag and it's gonna be really convenient to use throughout the week. I just want to pause for a moment to point out how much time we are saving by multitasking. If I had just tried to prep all of these ingredients one by one sequentially, it would have taken at least double the time. Instead, by utilizing different areas of the kitchen and different cooking tools at the same time, we are saving so much time and that is the best and most efficient way to meal prep. These veggies are looking tender and nicely browned. We're going to set them aside for now and come back to them soon. Our brown rice is also done at this point, so fluff it with a fork, and once it's cooled, store it in an airtight container. Okay, now it's time to get started on our proteins. First, you wanna drain and rinse two cans of chickpeas. Make sure to dry them really well so that they can crisp up in the oven. I like to gently roll them in a kitchen towel back and forth, but a salad spinner works even better. Add the chickpeas to a sheet pan, toss them with a bit of olive oil, season with salt and pepper, and roast them in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes, tossing at the 20 minute mark. While these are roasting, we'll make our second protein, the tofu. Grab an extra firm block of tofu, drain it and pat it dry as much as you can and slice it into slabs about a third of an inch thick. You should get 10 to 12 slabs. And you wanna pat dry the slabs a second time with some paper towels or a kitchen towel. Heat up some olive oil in a large nonstick pan, medium high heat, and once it's nice and hot, you'll pan fry the tofu for seven to eight minutes. I love cooking tofu this way because it gets crispy and you don't even have to press it. The tofu doesn't need much supervision, so we'll use this time to blend our cabbage sauce. One of the keystones of the building blocks method is to have one or two flavorful, versatile sauces in your fridge. It's such an easy way to elevate simple meals into something a little more gourmet. So we'll add the roasted onion and cabbage wedges to our blender, squeeze the roasted garlic cloves in there, they're gonna add this subtle sweetness, and the soaked cashews, which will help make everything creamy. To brighten the sauce, we'll add lemon zest and lemon juice, along with some Dijon mustard for tang and salt and pepper. Blend until the sauce is nice and creamy and thick, adding more water as needed for everything to come together. I know cabbage sauce doesn't sound like it would be good, but this is actually amazing and it's gonna be good on so many different things. All right, it's time to flip our tofu and the second side needs just five to six minutes. In the meantime, we can make a glaze for the tofu by combining maple syrup, Dijon mustard, apple cider vinegar, and cayenne pepper. This is totally optional, but recommend it if you have these ingredients in your pantry because it makes the tofu even better. Just heat up the glaze for 30 to 45 seconds to help thicken it up and then add your tofu back and watch it get sticky and glossy. Now we'll turn to our second sauce, which is a pistachio parsley pesto. Not a super traditional pesto, but it is super delicious and takes like five minutes. I like to add the pistachios to the food processor first to give them a chance to get pulverized. Then add in our parsley, garlic, lemon zest, lemon juice, and black pepper. I'm holding off on the salt at this point since these pistachios are salted, and you wanna blend until a paste forms. Then add in your extra virgin olive oil. Keep blending and scraping down the sides as you go until the sauce is pretty smooth. If it's too thick, you can add a spoon or two of water or some more olive oil. It's tangy, it's lemony, it's nutty, so good. Our chickpeas should be done by now as well, so let's grab those. And these also make a great high protein snack. All right, that is a wrap on our meal prep. Everything looks good. And now I'm gonna highlight a few different ways you can mix and match these different ingredients to create some fabulous meals at home. And in that free PDF guide, which is the link down below, you will find 10 different sample meals that you can choose from if you wanna dig a little deeper. And there's also instructions for how to reheat everything. For our first meal option, we'll assemble what you might call a balanced plate. Start with a bed of brown rice, add in one of those cabbage steaks, pile on some roasted chickpeas, dollop it off with some pesto, and top it with our spiced pistachios. You could also start with this same base of brown rice and cabbage, but use the tofu instead of the chickpeas and the cabbage cashew sauce instead of the pesto. I love plates like this because you get all the nutrients you need in one single meal. You get protein from the chickpeas or tofu, complex carbs from the brown rice and cabbage, healthy fats from the cashews and pistachios, and in every single ingredient you get a lot of fiber too. And although this is a somewhat humble meal, the sauces bring everything together and make it really flavorful. You could also take some of these ingredients and go for a grain salad bowl 
bowl situation, starting with a base of massaged kale and brown rice, then top it off with some of the tofu or the chickpeas, the cabbage cashew sauce, and those spiced pistachios. And if you wanted to jazz up this meal with a little extra flavor, some pickled red onions would be really great. Or if you're looking for a lighter meal, you could just skip the brown rice and turn this into a full-fledged salad. Feel free to add your own vinaigrette, or you can keep it simple with the pesto, a drizzle of olive oil, and a couple squeezes of lemon juice. Of course, by midweek, you might be looking for something a little bit different, and that is where convenience items come in handy. For instance, I might toss some of the pistachio pesto with some hot cooked pasta on the stove, heat up some of those vegan meatless meatballs from Aldi, and serve this pasta and meatballs dinner with maybe a massage kale salad on the side. You can also pair these meatballs with the cabbage steaks and the cabbage cashew sauce. If you've got some sauerkraut in your fridge, it makes a great Eastern European inspired meal. I've included even more mix and match meal ideas in the blog post and free PDF guide, which are linked down below. And to get all of these groceries at an amazing price, be sure to check out your local Aldi. Bye.